Statistics and Excel, binomial distribution, coin flip, random number generation. Get ready, taking a deep breath, holding it in for 10 seconds, looking forward to a smooth, soothing Excel. Here we are in Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But... But that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our CPA six pack shirts, a must have for any pool or beach time. Mixing money with muscle, always sure to attract attention. Yeah, even if you're not a CPA, you need this shirt. So you can like pull in that iconic CPA six pack stomach muscle vibe, man. You know. That CPA six pack everyone envisions in their mind when they think CPA. Yeah, as a CPA, I actually and unusually don't have tremendous abs. However, I was blessed with a whole lot of belly hair. Yeah, allowing me to sculpt the hair into a nice CPA six pack like shape, which is highly attractive. Yeah, may maybe the shirt will help you generate some belly hair too. And if it does, make sure to let me know. Maybe I'll try wearing it on my head. And, and yes, I know six pack isn't spelled right, but three letters is more efficient than four. So I trimmed it down a bit, okay? It's an improvement. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. So if you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access, there's three tabs down below. Example, practice blank. Example, in essence, answer key. Practice tab, have it pre-formatted cells so you can get to the heart of the practice problem. The blank tab, blank worksheet so we can practice forming formatting cells within Excel as we work through the practice problem. Let's look at the example tab to get an idea of where we will be going. We're considering a binomial distribution situation scenario of a coin flip scenario where we have a fair coin, 50% chance it lands on heads or tails. We need to define success. We're going to say that heads is a success tails is a fail we will be plotting this out using our binome.dist function we'll also look at it binome.dist.range so you can compare and contrast the use of the two we will plot it and then we'll use a random number generator a little bit more complex one than we've seen in prior sections found in the data and the analysis tools here and if you don't have that i'll show you how to open that up as well Let's go to the blank tab to get started. So we're gonna then format the entire worksheet to start out. I'm gonna do that by selecting the triangle up top, right click and format the cells. I'm gonna go to the currency and negative numbers, red and bracketed, no dollar sign and no decimals as our starting point. We have a coin flip scenario, coin flips, I'll just call it up top. And I'm going to make the whole thing bold as well, selecting the triangle, home tab, font group, and emboldening the entire thing. All right, so what we need for a binomial type distribution is P for the probability of success for each activity. So we're going to say this is going to be P or the probability of success. And for a coin flipped, if it's a fair coin, we're, t we're going to say that's going to be 0.5 typically. So I'm going to say 50%, 0 0.5, home tab, number group. Let's percentify that cell. And then the number of rounds, I'm going to say number of rounds. And I'm just going to say there'll be 12 rounds, 12 rounds. All right, so then I'm going to make column C a little bit skinnier and plot this out. So let's plot it out. Now we'll plot this out in a similar way as we did with the prior presentation. I'm gonna say X and it's gonna be P of X. I'll make this black and white up top, selecting these two up top, home tab, font group, bucket drop down, making it black and then making it white and centering that. And so then now I'm gonna say this is gonna be numbered from uh, zero to 12 but I'm gonna use our nice sequence function to do that. So instead of going zero, one, two, 
and selecting those and copying down to 12, which we could do, but I would like it to be adjustable. So I'm gonna use the sequence uh, thing here and I'm gonna try to show the pros and cons of using these spill arrays to some degrees as well as we think about this, we'll do this two different ways. So I'm gonna say this equals the sequence S E Q sequence tab. And then I'm gonna say that we want the rows are gonna be 12 of them plus one because I need 12 plus zero. And I'm gonna start at zero instead of one. Number of columns, none. So I'm gonna put two commas to skip that argument. The starting point will be zero. Closing it up and enter and you give us that nice spill format there. Now let's do the uh, second bit here, which is the binome. And once again, I'm gonna use an array kind of format. So this is gonna be by bi binome uh, binome dot dist. So here we have the two that we have dot dist and dot range dot dist dot range. The dot dist dot range is the newer of the two, and so it's and it's got more flexibility. But again, there's kind of pros and cons to using each of them, and you might you might pick one or the other depending on your circumstance. But this is this one you should be able to use basically for all circumstances and therefore might be the default that you would want to be thinking of. So we're gonna say then the, the number of trials is going to be 12 and then comma, the probability is gonna be the 50 comma, and then the numbers, I'm gonna select this range here. So I'm gonna put my cursor on uh, here, D2, control shift down. so it, picks up that range. I'm also going to select these two and make sure that they're absolute F4 dollar sign before the B and the four. This one F4 dollar sign bef between the B and the four or before the B and the three and then enter. So then it spills down. So now we've got these arrays here. If I select this item home tab number group percentify it and add some decimals. There we have it. Now I'm gonna do the same thing here uh, and not use the arrays. One of the downfalls or, or pitfalls of using an array, by the way, is it's a little bit more difficult to say insert a table. If I wanna go insert and put a table, then you know it's not picking, see how it didn't pick the entire area that it normally would if there were not arrays here. And if I close this up and I try to say, I want this whole thing in a table, insert table and okay, it messes up the spills uh, so sometimes so so you got to be a little bit careful when you're working with the tables the other thing is that it doesn't have a formula down here it only has a formula in that top cell which could be a pro or a con but let's do the same thing i'm going to copy this down here and do the do it without an array so let's copy that let's give us a, some space and I'll put it down here to see the two methods you might use. I'm gonna have the same headers. This equals the X and then copying that to the right for the F of X, home tab, font group, black, white, centering it. So now I could use the standard, the good old method of just saying zero, one, two, selecting those three copying it down with the fill handle and then I'll use the other uh, binome function so it equals binome uh, binome dot dist but not the range this time so binome dot dist double clicking it so now we've got uh, the numbers which I'm going to pick up this one and note the order of of the arguments are a little bit different so I'm gonna say comma, and then the trials that we're gonna have will be 12. And then I'm gonna say F4 on the keyboard to make that absolute because I'm gonna copy it down. And then comma, the probability is gonna be 50% F4 on the keyboard because I'm gonna be copying it down. And then comma, and you'll note, it's got this cumulative uh, argument. Now the cumulative argument is the same thing or something we saw with the Poisson distribution where it's saying that if you pick false, then you're not gonna have a cumulative up to a certain point. Uh, whereas if you pick true, it'll try to do the cumulative up to 
uh, up to the point, up to that certain point. We want it not to be cumulative, so we can type in false, or we can put a zero here, which will also say false. That's telling it false, and enter. I'm gonna put my cursor on it, and then double click the fill handle. That should copy it down, and then we'll percentify it, and add a couple decimals. Now with this second one, note that the, what we can do here is, is insert a table, because we didn't use the spill functions in any spill uh, function. So I can go to the insert, and if my cursor is in here, I can make a table from it and insert the table. And there we have it. And the tables can be nice sometimes because you have certain formatting within the tables. And I feel like it's less likely that you're going to kind of mess up your data when it's in the table, such as, you know, sorting the data on one column without sorting the data on the other column. When I'm in the table, I can also go to the table tools up top. We can add a total column. And if I sum this up, you can see that this sums up to 100%. That'll give us kind of a check figure that what we're doing is correct. However, if I go back up top here, you'll recall one of the benefits from the prior presentation, you may recall, is that now I can adjust this number a little bit more easily. So if I adjust this number and say I want to make it 15, notice now because we used a spill sequence, it'll now increase to 15 automatically. And so I can bring it back down to 12. So you have a, a bit more flexibility with these ones. Also just note with this binome.dist.range, the arguments are a little bit different and they're a little bit more flexible. We don't need the cumulative uh, argument as much because it allows us to enter multiple arguments, which allows us to kind of pick the middle of the range a little bit more directly as opposed to what we did with the Poisson distribution. If you recall, if you saw the prior presentations where we had to do the cumulative up to a certain point and then subtract out the cumulative up to a, up to a different point, right? In order to get that middle range. So it's a little bit, it's got a little bit more flexibility. Okay, let's go ahead and graph this thing. I'm gonna make column F a little bit skinnier and then let's select our data and so I'm gonna go up top and go to the insert and then we'll go to the charts and we'll enter the bar chart and add our bar chart. So I'm gonna pull that to the right and then do our standard process. I'm gonna click on it, go to the data up top and I would like to go to the edit of this side to make sure it's picking up our X numbers which are gonna be from zero to 12. So I'm going to say OK and OK. And so there we have it. I'll just delete this top bit. And so so there we have it. And you can see, of course, that it kind of in the middle point is that six as we would expect. We can also plot it with a line chart, too. So I can select these insert. We can then go to the charts and have a line chart, something like this one and have it look like this format. I'll do the same thing here. I'm going to uh, click on the data and select this one and say, I want to make sure that you pick up my numbers here, uh, zero to 12 and okay, okay. So we can format it like that. And it looks kind of like what you would expect the, the middle point being six. So let's do a, a little bit of an analysis similar to what we did in the prior presentation, if we think about our data over here, if we have a fair coin 50-50 on the coin flips, remember if I flipped it zero times, if I had zero flips, then if I define a success as heads, it, then th I'm not gonna get any heads, of course, so 100% likelihood that that it's gonna be you know, at zero, right, zero. And then I'm gonna say if I have one, well then, uh, if I have zero successes, the likelihood is 50%. The likelihood if under two flips that I get one success defined as a heads is 50%. If I say two, then now we're gonna say, okay, if I do it, if I do the flip two times, the likelihood that I get no successes defined as heads, 25% likelihood that I get one success defined as heads, 50% likelihood that I get two successes, both heads is 25%. And if I go to three, then you can see it's 
likelihood that I get zero successes out of three flips, 12.50. Uh, one success out of the three flips, 37.5. Two successes out of the three flips, 37.5. And three successes, they're all successful heads, 12.5, and then four, and so on and so forth. So you can see how this is being built. And we looked at the changing of the curve on the right hand side in a prior presentation as well. So let's put let's put it back up to 12. So we're, now we're saying 12 times we flipped it. And by the way, one other thing to look at if the coin was not fair, then if it was 60, like, let's say, you know, it's going to land 55% of the time heads. So it's it's slightly tweaked the casino tweaked the coin or whatever, right? So now if I go if I flip it one time, now it's got a if we have zero successes, zero heads, if it's in our favor that it's 55% heads, then it's going to be 45% no heads, 55% that it will be heads two per two times. Now we've got only 20.25 no heads, 49.5 that we get one head out of the two, 30.25 two heads and so on and so forth. So we'll consider it a fair coin. We're going to flip it 12 times. It's going to be back to uh, the norm here, back to the where we started. So now let's mirror the experiment. So instead of us using simply a random number generation as we saw in prior examples, whereas if, if I was going to simulate each coin flip, I can say equals random, you know, between one and two, having one represent heads, two represent tails. But instead, we're going to get a little bit more sophisticated here and go to the data tab. And we're going to say that I want to have the data analysis tool help me generate the outcomes of 12, 12 flips according to the rules that we have here. So I'm going to say these are going to be the outcomes that we'll generate. Let's make this home tab font black, white, center it. I'm going to put them here. And then in the data tab, if you don't have this analysis section, you go to the file tab and then options and then add-ins and then Excel add-ins and go. And you want to take that analysis tool pack. And if you have that tool pack, then you've got our tools in the data tab. So let's open that up. And I want to go to some random generation numbers and we're going to say okay and i'm going to say one here that's basically the number of columns number of random numbers let's go to a thousand like have we been doing customarily this time we did this with a poisson distribution this time we want to get the generated numbers in accordance with a binomial distribution p we remember is point is uh point 0.5 50 percent and the number of trials n is going to be 12. So we're going to have 12 flips with a P of 50% for each of the flips. And then I'm going to put down here the output range. Where do we want to put it? I want to put those thousand numbers right there. So that's going to go to P2. And I'll say OK. And now it's simulating these, the, these tests, right? So now we flipped these are representing, for example, one test of 12 flips where I've got five successes, which we define as heads, right? So five heads out of 12, seven heads out of 12, seven heads out of 12, four out of 12, four out of 12, four out of 12, nine out of 12, and so on and so forth. So let's put those uh, results into a bucket if we could. So I'm going to make this a little smaller and i'm going to say this these are going to be our bends and this is going to be the frequency now when we have the bends are going to be anywhere from zero up to uh one two they could go up to 12 right because it's possible that i have some that had actually 12 successes uh but unlikely that we flip the coin 12 times but possible, right? So we got 12 up to here. And then you would, let's make this black and white. Home tab, font group, black, white, 
center, let's wrap it and center it. Okay. I didn't mean to center it that way. Let's center it back to the, okay. So, <laughs> so now we could say, you would think you could use the count if equals count if, and then brackets, and you'd say, well, this range, the outcomes I have, control shift down, I'm holding control backspace, comma, and that's the criteria, close it up, enter, right? Meaning every time you find a zero over here, you put it over here. And we actually had two times where there were zero, <laughs> zero uh, heads, which is out of 12 flips, right? Out of all these thousand flips that we did. So that's so interesting. But I think it's easier or it's more useful oftentimes or safer to use a frequency spill array because sometimes for whatever reason, these numbers may not be exactly whole numbers or something like that. So sometimes it doesn't pick up all the numbers. So I'm gonna use equals frequency tab and then the data array is gonna be here. I'm gonna hold control shift on the keyboard and down and then I'm holding control backspace to get back to the top, comma, then the bends, I'm gonna put my cursor here, control shift down, and there are the bends. And so I could just hit enter and it spills them down. It goes a little bit far here. So I'm gonna to try to trim that last bit off, double clicking on it. And I'm gonna get rid of that, bring it back to 13. And there we have it. Now let's put the total down below and it should total up to a thousand here because we did this a thousand times. We did a thousand 12 round flips of the coin. So this equals the sum, or I could do it quickly by saying alt equals, I got to click off and then back on alt equals enter comes out to a thousand. So that makes me feel like, okay, it picked up all the numbers of these thousand rounds of 12 flips that we had. And these are the results. So two times out of a thousand, we didn't get any heads in a 12 flips of the coin. Uh, one heads, one time, uh, zero times, we got two out of 12 heads, 13 times, three out of 12, 44 times, four out of 12, 119 times. And again, you would expect that somewhere like six out of 12 would be kind of in the middle uh, of, all, of all these thousand flips of 12 flips, right? And so now let's take a percent of the total. Let's take this as a percent of the total. I'm going to format paint home tab, format paint that here. And this will equal the two divided by the 1000. I'm going to select F4 to make that absolute. So I'm going to take each number divided by the total enter. Let's make it a uh, percent home tab font group percentify it adding a couple decimals and then double click the fill handle dragging it down or taking it down i'm going to delete that bottom bit because i don't want it to take this divided by this i want it to instead sum up alt equals sum boom okay so now let's compare that and look at the difference between what what was what was given by the binome formula so i'm going to select Fill, filling that in. I got to turn my music back on in the background. You can't hear the music. I'd be copyright if I, but here we go. So then I'm going to say this is going to be equal to uh, this minus the, I don't work without the music, man. I refuse to keep going. Okay. We'll subtract that out. Percentify home tab number group percentify. You better recognize, you can't recognize unless you percentify. And then we're gonna copy that down. And then I could copy that across. And so so now you can see kind of uh, the differences of what we got over here on the likelihood, right? That we get uh, zero, you know, out of the out of the 12 flips, right? When we actually ran the test, uh, 0.2, versus 0 0.2, 0 0.29 that we get one out of 12, the likelihood, right? And then uh, this came out to zero and then getting two is 1.61, 1 
and 1.3. And you would you would expect then that if I did this experiment more times, like a thousand, I did it a thousand times. If I did it infinite amount of times, like the entire population, that we'd imagine the entire an infinite that we would come out to these numbers, right? But we're taking a finite sample. So so then th the idea would be that this this then gives us pretty good you know predictive power about this scenario which has an element of randomness in it let's go ahead and plot this one too so i'll select i'll plot them together i'll select these items here and let's do it with a line chart insert charts let's do a line chart and go that one that's the percent of the total line chart i'm going to go to my data and edit the x i want to pick up my x's so don't just do your own x's excel and then i'm going to add another one add another data set so we can see the other data set which is going to be the p of x data set and so we can see the differences on a side by side and we'll say okay pick those ones up por favor if you please and then okay and okay and so there we have it so it's pretty you know they're pretty close right uh there so you would think that the binome.disk gives us some uh predictive power of course in this kind of situation and in practical situations this actually comes up all the time so whenever whenever we can break something down to uh, a success or fail situation and then get an idea of what the likelihood is for any one uh one uh round that we're doing like flipping the coins like a sales call is a common example right so every time I call someone, it might not be 50% chance of success. It's probably going to be far lower than that. But but if I have an, a chance of success percent, uh, then th then it's a, either a win lose situation. I can start to plot out and 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 uh, get some idea of the results. All right, let's go ahead and make this uh, blue. I'll make this a header, home tab, font group, black, white. Let's make this blue and bordered, font group border it make it blue if you don't have that blue it's in here you don't have to use that blue but that's what i do it's nice and kind of bright it doesn't remind me of the horror days of having to write this down in a spreadsheet uh, and not being able to read my own writing and people are like well, you didn't add it up right because you couldn't read your own number two that two doesn't look right it's like whatever dude why don't you use excel for crying out loud what are we doing around here you can't add that up in your mind no i can't add it up in my head i <laughs> control shift down we're gonna say home tab that's why we have computers for crying out loud control shift down and we'll make this sorry to share my traumas with you but i'm just saying the blue is, doesn't doesn't uh, trigger the the uh, the nightmares quite as readily. So there we have it. Uh, let's do a quick spell check on it. And frequency. Okay, looks good.